Welcome back to the Hall of Origins. We're still in the Mario wing, but this is our first time on the other side of the hallway, and today let's take a look at a character who predates the Mario franchise. So fun fact, Pauline is one of the first female video game characters created by Nintendo. The third, in fact, with the first being Betty, the woman Mr. Jack has to rescue a Nintendo Sheriff arcade game, and the second being Alarm Lady from Manhole of the Game & Watch series. But unlike these other women, Pauline gained popularity for appearing in the arcade mega-hit Donkey Kong. At this time, the character hadn't received the name Pauline yet, and was only known as Lady. So in the game, the gargantuan gorilla kidnaps his owner's girlfriend, Lady, and is taken to the top of an unfinished building, leaving her boyfriend, and Donkey Kong's owner, Mario, to climb up the structure in order to save her. But naturally, as soon as Mario gets close, Donkey Kong grabs Lady and takes her to the next level. After completing four levels, Mario saves Lady and Donkey Kong is subdued. And here's something interesting. Originally, Lady had a line of dialogue yelling help when Donkey Kong gets her to the top of the building, and it still can be found in the game's code. I'm guessing this was cut because if you didn't know what she was saying, then it would be impossible to hear. I have listened to this so many times, and I cannot hear the word help. It kind of sounds like she's saying Chad. Wait a minute. Is she calling for Chad? Is Chad Mario's real name? Did this secret get revealed in a cut line of dialogue? Um, no, more than likely not. It's just a bad voice clip, and I agree with removing it. Lady's design in-game was based off of Shigeru Miyamoto's advertisement artwork that decorated the arcade cabinet. In this art, Lady looks a little different than how she appears in-game, but that was normal at the time with her being blonde with a red dress, and the game version has orange hair and a pink dress. The American artwork pushes this difference a little further by making her dress look a little bit more ragged and torn, and her hair is slightly a mess, which is probably a callback to Faye Ray in the original 1933 King Kong movie. So after the arcade game came out and merchandise and media was created, it was decided to give Lady a name. She was given the name Pauline after Polly James, the wife of Nintendo of America's warehouse manager, Don James. He would later confirm this years later at Nintendo's E3 2018 Treehouse Live event. But this name didn't catch on in Japan for a while, so there was a time when both illustrations were seen as two different characters. The Japanese one kept the name Lady, and the American version was called Pauline. So it was kind of a Pete's Toadstool type of thing, where outside of Japan she was called one thing, but to Japanese gamers she was another. And this continuity still holds true today, and mostly it's because when Donkey Kong was released on the Game Boy, Japan was shown her American name for the first time, and the instruction manual stated that this wasn't the same woman from the arcade game, but a new heroine. And this was even doubled down on by the perfect edition of the great Mario character encyclopedia where both Pauline and Lady were given separate entries, the only difference being that Lady's personality is described as docile, and Pauline's personality as vigorous. However, Shigeru Miyamoto has acknowledged that the two are in fact the same person. I know, it gets kinda complicated. So like every 80s property that gets really popular, Donkey Kong got itself a Saturday morning cartoon show. In this series, Donkey Kong has escaped from the circus, and Mario and Pauline have to chase him down and bring him back. In this iteration, Pauline is Donkey Kong's trainer. How did that big ape learn to be so sneaky? I trained him that way. Pauline's design was based off the American artwork advertisements, and she was voiced by Judy Stranges. Oh, Donkey Kong! It's me, Pauline! Whatever you're thinking, Donkey Kong, stop it this minute! <laughs> Donkey Kong, shame on you! Oh, oh. oh, um, I don't think I want to know what he was thinking. <laughs> While Julie Strangest doesn't have many acting credits, she probably is best known for starring in the 1970s superhero show, Electra Woman and Dinah Girl, where she played Dinah Girl. The special protective coating on the crystal can withstand anything! Right! If we can just get them into position... Yeah, this show is kind of on the same level as the Adam West Batman series, where it's cheesy, but you also realize it's a product of its time. So after Donkey Kong, Pauline popped up again in Nintendo's Pinball. During the bonus stage, Mario moves the platform to bounce the ball upwards to break the floor under Pauline to free her. 
It should also be noted that this was the first time Pauline is featured with brown hair instead of blonde. After this entry, Pauline really didn't show up anymore, except for when there was a re-release of Donkey Kong. And most of this was because by this time, Princess Peach, or Princess Toadstool in the West, had now been introduced, and I guess two people for Mario to save just sounded unnecessary. Heck, in some entries, Princess Peach completely replaced Pauline. So in the late 90s, Nintendo decided to re-release the Game & Watch games to the Game Boy, but update them a little bit, and one of the changes they made for Game & Watch Gallery 2 was making it so you had to save Peach from Donkey Kong instead of Pauline. Dang, that must be a bummer to be cut from your own game and replaced with the more popular girl. Can I also say that when I was a kid, I always thought that Pauline and Princess Toadstool were the same person? You have to keep in mind that my first exposure to the series was Super Mario Bros. So at this point, Nintendo wasn't doing much with her anymore. So when I played Donkey Kong, I just assumed it was Princess Toadstool standing up there. It wasn't until the release of Mario 3, when I read the Nintendo Power Strategy Guide, that I learned of Pauline's existence. There's this one page that lists Mario's friends, and Toadstool and Pauline are listed as two different people. I was like, huh, who knew? So other than the release of Donkey Kong for Game Boy that showed Pauline in the design that we're more familiar with today, she didn't appear in video games in a prominent role until 12 years later in 2006, when Mario vs. Donkey Kong 2 March of the Minis was released. In this game, Pauline appears for the first time as a three-dimensional character. So the story is that Mario is opening the Super Mini Mario World theme park, and has invited Pauline as the guest of honor. But Donkey Kong is in the crowd, and of course, falls in love at the sight of her. He presents her with a mini Donkey Kong figure, but she doesn't notice, and takes Mario's minifigure instead. Enraged, Donkey Kong kidnaps Pauline and takes her to the top of the building, thus leading to the Mario Minis to assist Mario in rescuing her. But for Pauline, her big revival role was just over the horizon. In 2017, Super Mario Odyssey was released, and featured in the advertisements was Pauline in a brand new role, the Mayor of New Donk City, which is implied to be the city where the original Donkey Kong arcade game takes place. Leading up to the game's release, Pauline and her new song Jump Up Superstar were featured on the majority of the advertising, the trailer especially which had a live-action Pauline singing while Mario jumps around New Donk City. This was so creative, I wish more video games would advertise with this much energy. So in the game, once Mario gets to New Donk City, he encounters Pauline, whom is troubled that Bowser has also arrived and is causing chaos. This of course leads to Mario solving the problem for her, because, you know, he does what he does. But once the crisis is over, she tasks you with finding various band members to play backup for her during the city celebration. Naturally, Mario finds the musicians in different parts of the city, and this leads to one of the big highlights of the game. Pauline singing her song while Mario travels through a bunch of 8-bit obstacles, including a recreation of the original Donkey Kong arcade, to make it to her location. I would also like to point out that one of the cool things that Pauline does while she's performing is mimic the movements that her 8-bit self did back in the original game. This is such a cool easter egg, I love it! Pauline was voiced by Kate Higgins and even showed up at the Video Game Awards show in 2017 and performed a live concert of Jump Up Superstar. This isn't her first video game role, however. Fans of Sonic the Hedgehog might recognize her as the voice of Tails and Wave in the Mario and Sonic Olympic Games series. And ever since Mario Odyssey, she's been voicing Pauline in all of her appearances. And speaking of her other appearances, after Mario Odyssey, Pauline started showing up in other Mario franchises. In fact, her appearance in Mario Tennis Aces marked the very first time in the character's history that she was playable. This also gave her the record for longest amount of time from her creation to her being playable than any other character in history. Wow. And she continued on after that appearing in Mario Golf Super Rush and Mario Strikers Battle League. So it looks like Pauline is here to stay, and I for one am happy to see that after so many years of sitting on the sidelines, she can be included. She went from being a damsel in distress to an animal trainer, mayor of New Donk City, and then a sports star. And I get the feeling she's just getting started. Welcome to the Mario Party, Pauline.